Hello YouTubers and welcome to the channel today and thanks for checking out the video. Um, first and foremostly, whether you're a regular subscriber to the channel or you just joined the channel for the first time today and just like what you see or just, just drop by because specifically you wanted to see the video I'm about to show you done. Uh, first and foremostly, my message to you all is this. I hope that you're safe and well and that you and your loved ones are okay and that you're managing to cope as best you can um, through these very strange and difficult times that we're faced with um, as a nation and also as a planet right now. Anyway, I hope videos like this will be able to cheer you up, at least keep you interested and uh, hopefully, more importantly, help you to uh, do what I'm going to show you. Anyway, today I'm going to show you how to actually um, physically uh, convert for motors um, the EFE London Underground trains, in, in particular we're going to be motorising the EFE 1938 stock, um, which is, I'll just get it off the camera, excuse my arm there, but it's one of these. These are the lovely EFE tube trains. I've already done a four-car 1962 um, train, and this is the 1938 red tube trains that we're going to be motorising, just this particular driving motor car only, and the aim of which, by the end of this video, you'll see how basically how to fit two Tenshodo or Spud motors uh, wired up in series so motor there, motor there, so there's two motors in the actual driving car just like the real thing. So what I'm going to do is basically show you how to take off the body and then in the first part I'm going to show you how to remove these bogies here and also we're going to be doing some cutting of the under frame to accommodate the new motor bogies as opposed to the dummy EFE ones so hopefully it'll be easier to follow and hopefully I'll do my best to illustrate and show you what I'm going to do and in the day more importantly you'll be able to do the same thing at home um, with your tube train models if you feel confident enough and trust me it's very very easy to do if you do exactly the way I'm going to show you to do it anyway so more importantly there's the patient today and I'm going to be using also, before we get into the tool size as to what you're going to need for the conversion job, I'm going to show you what we're going to also work from. Um, this is the PDF document, if you like, um, from uh, Radley Models. If you want a copy of this, just either drop me a message and I can put the link in, or more important, I can email you privately um, the PDF file. And this shows you, and you can print it off, or you can look at it on your... I, um, iPad or whatever and you can show it shows you exactly the steps we're going to do so we're going to be working from this document here as well as me physically explaining and showing you what we're doing with the model so the first things first is we need to remove um, the body but more importantly we need to remove the bogies first so what we're going to do we're going to remove the bogies and then we're going to take off some of the underframe detail there with a craft knife as you can see there it does show you in step by steps but basically I'm going to show you what exactly this does in terms of step by step um, like I said if you want a copy of this um, just email me or message me um, on the channel and in the comments box below just just ask me if I I can send you a copy and I've got a copy of this at home the PDF file I can send you it no problem um, so you can have a look for yourselves and print it off. But anyway, we're going to be working with this, like I said, plus we're going to be physically doing the necessary with the actual job. So anyway, let's get on with it. So, what do we actually need for this job as such? Well, what you will need as follows in terms of tools. Let's put this up there, out of the way, just for a second. So on today's operating table, ladies and gents, you'll need the following. You will need one of these, which is a half decent or pretty decent um, craft knife or a safety knife or retractable blade knife or a standing knife, whatever you want to call it. You need one of these. You will also need a flathead screwdriver. You need one of those. Out there, so you can see it. You will also need a flat file of thus size. If you've got anything a little bit bigger, doesn't matter, but a flat file, a nice flat file is what you want as well. So you shove that down there as well. Oh, and you will need one of these, believe it or not. Um, this, if you've not seen these before, um, these are called razor files. Uh, these are absolutely essential for cutting away the plastic, as you'll see as we go into the video, because you'll need to cut a space um, in between the front pair of seats 
for where the motor bogey sits up and under so you'll need one of these to raise a far. I didn't think I'd actually need one um, but they actually are very very good and I really haven't looked back since I've bought this. comes in handy for loads of jobs as well so raise a far, absolutely and it does say in the instructions that you are, you can use uh, rail cutters those like um, really heavy duty clippers and cutlers whatever you call them um, they cut rail uh, model railway rail or I prefer to use one of these babies a Dremel absolutely essential for loads of jobs and if, if used rightly and, and sensibly um, you can get some nice um, even cuts with these through the frame makes life a lot easier a lot more quicker and also a lot less messy you can do much more neater finishes um, I've got a Dremel um, metal disc wheel attachment on mine which is for cutting through mild steel and more so through white metal and most railway related um, tough materials anyway that's what you want is a Dremel so a Dremel razor saw screwdriver flathead a flat file and a standing knife that's what mainly we're going to be using okay so I'll just pause the video and then we'll get the actual work on the way that's your cue by the way to go and get a cup of tea <laughs> see you in a mo okay folks welcome back hope you got all your things necessary anyway here we go then so the first thing you want to do before we begin anything else underneath the driving motor car or wherever you're going to put the motors in you could be the trailer car or the undone wherever you're going to put it um, mine's going to be a four car unit so it's four carriages so I'm going to put my motors in the lead driving motor coach so the first thing we need to do is we need to remove both these bogies and what you do is follows if you take a flathead screwdriver thus so turn the bogey away from you on my camera shot it's actually away as well and if you just put your flathead screwdriver gently underneath there gently push up bogey simply pops out like that very easy to do and if we swing it round carefully do the other side as well that's it just prise it off there so the bogies come off now you've got the bogies completely removed from the underneath the chassis and the next thing you need to do is if you look at these bogies you'll need to open them up anyway because you won't be using in my case for this job I'm not going to be using the actual wheels anymore because in place it's going to be a motor that's it's going to be sitting in this frame here so that will be revealed much later on in the video but for the all intensive purposes what you need to do at this stage again with your screwdriver or with your finger just push the wheels down that's uh, push downwards with your thumbs and just pop the frame out like that and you might see one of these things pop out these are absolutely of no use to man or beast they are the anti-friction device little um, springs that I talked about in the last video they absolutely are no good you don't need those so what you need to do is pop the wheels aside safely somewhere we'll put them in there and just take the same off the other end as well pop those out don't need those anymore as you come so what you'll need to do is just keep the bogey frames themselves because you'll be cutting those out at a later stage in the video again I'll show you so don't worry so pop those safely in the old box there chuck the wheels in there they're coming out of the spares these spring clips you can just launch into oblivion make sure you don't hit anyone's eye when you're doing it <laughs> right the next stage what you do is you carefully roll the body over and as mentioned there's a screw here and there's two screws either end here you'll find them with your screwdriver and all you do is just undo those but like a very famous children's program here's one I prepared earlier I simply took those off so all you do once the screws come out you simply separate the body from the chassis you put your body this bit here the body put that safely away you don't need that for a long time put that safely out the way so what you should have now is the seating detail and 
the chassis itself and without minus the bogies. So what you've now got to do is underneath this middle bit here you'll see a, a section of detail uh, in this middle part of the chassis right bang in the middle this is the underfloor equipment detail uh, little panel and this has to come off as well so underneath here there's four screws one two three four that actually hold the seating unit um, to the chassis so in order to remove this you have to remove this bit of detail and what we're going to do is if we take our Stanley knife Ooh, that's so. That over the way out there. Right, that's it. Right. So what we're going to do is simply using a, a standing knife. We're going to excuse me. I'll bring the camera in so you can see what we're doing a bit better. Apologies. There we are. So what we're going to do is this section here, as mentioned. If you can see it on the camera, there's no screws holding that. Believe it or not, it's just held in by. Um, like a resin type glue um, which will expose the bits we need underneath. You'll see what I'm doing anyway. So if we take our knife, now again to the younger people out there watching this video who are feeling confident to do this please be really careful and adults as well. We can all cut ourselves on these things so again when using sharp blades be very careful always cut away from yourself never towards you. So what we're going to do is if I turn it around that way start from the corner and gently put the blade underneath and just once you get it under just gently run it under the chassis working a little bit at a time to away from you not towards you and just very very gently once you got to the corner stop Take the blade out, reinsert it where you've just lifted it, and again, just work underneath it until you see it. You see it's popping up there, look. That's almost out. Turn it around again. Start from the other end and work away from yourself down the other side. Take your time, no rush, and you'll find out it comes off with a nice bit of sticky plastic factory glue on the other side. Yeah. That's nice there, nice little present for you. Yeah. And again you can just take a knife and just it all just comes off. I mean you ain't gotta worry about that so much, you can just tie that up after. You wanna just be really finicky and just flip it up like that. Get underneath it. You're not gonna do any damage because it's only like a cheap glue. And just peel it off. Anyone ever do that in school when they was a kid? They used to put glue on their hands, that cheap nasty glue. <laughs> Let it dry and then sit back and peel it off your skin and make out you're a flesh eating zombie or something. I used to do that, but then again, maybe I was the only one. Which means I'm awfully strange. Again, see what I'm doing? Just working away with the knife. Taking all that glue off there. And it is worth doing that because it makes it tidy and also you're not going to need that on no, no more. This is a good knife actually, I've got this from Amazon and it's nice, it's got a spring back facility so when there's no way I can actually slice my finger on there without doing any damage. Anyway, so anyway that's the guest of the, the idea, take all this glue off here, once it comes off as you can see it comes off quite easy. Now then, if you look on the camera shot there, we have one, two, three, four screws. Do not lose these once we take them out, so we're going to put them in there, or what I do, I've got one of these little pots that when my daughter was a baby many, many moons ago, I've got loads of baby feeding equipment and I've got loads of these clear plastic tubs that we never use, so these come in handy to put the old screws in, so I'm going to use that right now and put that there, let me come out of the shot a bit, Oop, that's better isn't it, right, that's what we'll do now. I'm going to undo these four screws, which you will do also at home. So that's your next step. And by the way, this bit of equipment here, put that somewhere safe. I'm going to put it where the bogies are so we don't lose it. So get yourself an ice cream container or any clear plastic container where you can put these parts separately. So because you will get quite a few parts off this and you don't want to lose them. Because if you do, you will learn an absolutely brand new foreign language that none of your neighbours will ever have heard you use before. 
So, take these out. They do come out. Got one out there. Come on, there we are. Stick them in the old pot so we know what we're doing. That there like that. <coughs> I tell you what, it's an absolutely gorgeous day in London uh, today. It really is lovely, despite having to stay outside. I could go outside for my official exercise or my two metre distance recreation, but this is my recreation, folks. This is how I live my life anyway. I'm not very much of a going out person, so this is all I need, or one of the things that I need. So anyway, now you've got your screws removed. Put them in the old tub, pop them out like that. So now you're left with this, which is your chassis and your seating area. You now put this aside with your body, put that out of the way for a minute, you won't need that just for a minute. So let's pop that out of the way on my shelf. And these screws, I'm just going to put the little, 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 I do like littles, plug. <laughs> Good shop. Um, put the lid on this and put it up there. Right, now we're going to come to the actual cutting. So for this, this is where the Dremel is going to come in handy. Now, if I show you this, it makes more sense for you to look on the video when you're doing this at home. As you can see, you've got this cross member shape here going da -da and da -da -da, all the way across. That little cross section has to be cut out because this whole square part here is what we're going to remove. So there's just the square aperture that's going to be left. And what that will be, that will be the space for the motor bogey and when we fit it up uh, eventually later on at the uh, later stage of the build. But what we need to do right now is get our Dremel and we're going to start making some cuts and cut this bit out there. We're going to make a cut there, a cut here, a cut here and a cut there. And then once that's done we'll flip it over and we're going to trim um, these back here as well, these wheel recesses are going to come back but not all the way. Anyway, like I said, I'm going to do this in stages so once I've done the first bit of cutting I'm going to stop to show you how I've cut it and then we'll continue on with the next bit and so on. So basically, you hopefully you guys and girls can follow this at home and it's not too complicated. So what we're going to initially do, because this is going to be for two motors whereas normally I'd cut just the one bogey section away and leave the other one for the plastic dummy bogey we're going to cut both these out today because it's going to have two motors in like I said and eventually once they're all in we're going to wind them up in series and uh, hopefully that should uh, give it more improved traction but anyway this is how we're going to do it so the first thing I'm going to do I sound a bit like old Boris did didn't I right, the first thing we're going to do people of Great Britain we're going to take our EFE tube train motorize it so it is effective and safe to use on 12 volts. Do not keep your Dremel running more than two meters apart. <laughs> I swear I haven't had anything to drink yet. It's not one o'clock. <laughs> People of YouTube, this is how you convert your EFE tube train. Oh dear, I'll stop this. Right. <laughs> <laughs> right, what I do at home guys, um, ladies and gentlemen, what I do is I've got these two pieces of planks that came off of an old uh, kitchen drawer that I ripped apart the other day, but I saved the bits of drawer, made myself two resting blocks out of them, simply because they help when you're doing things like cutting and then you've got to get in between anywhere, and you don't want to go through the surface below, even though this is an old an old table underneath here, um, this helps when you're cutting, so anyway. So what I'm going to do, I'll do one bit first and as mentioned I'll stop and show you what we're doing afterwards. So, the first thing we need to do is put it around that way. Right, let's fire up the old Dremel. Put that there like that. I'm just trying to move this in shot so you can see hopefully what I'm going to do. So we're going to work on this one here. So you'll see me cutting now, and then I'll stop and explain what we're going to do next, okay?
sorry, I just meant to show you actually show something. Apologies. Um, when when you're cutting these, before we do cut do the actual cutting, this is important to show you. I bring it up right to the camera. Um, you only want to cut just inside. Don't cut over the actual edge of the bogey frame or the chassis itself because you'll weaken it and you'll it'll cause pro massive problems. What you want to do is cut just inside that line there, just where it just about meets the edge of the out of the part of the chassis. It's where it just meets the uh, the edge of the chassis there with my screwdriver's rubbing. That's as far as you want to go. Just remove that. Um, keep him with that within that line there. In actual fact, I'll do the first cut to give you an idea how you should cut it, and that'll make more sense, wouldn't it? Alright, let's go. you that's exactly as far as you need to go don't go any further okay we'll carry on So what we've done so far is we've got a long way to go. I've just done a little cut there and I say we've cut along there. We're now going to finish it off and cut there and there which will release that, release that main cross section. Okay, So we'll do a cut there and do a cut there. Right, I've got to shift this around the other way. Hopefully you can still see the cut I'm going to do. Can be a bit awkward if you're 
doing this for the first time, but you, it's okay, you will get through it, don't worry. So that's essentially the first couple of cuts you'll need to do. Like she's, both sides have been cut through there and both these pieces have been cut away from the frame. So what you need to do is flip it over and just cut out the rest. And I shall do so as now. Let's have a go right. Don't worry about the little scratches and burrs you'll get on this because you can come around with the file in the next stage and tidy it up so don't panic it looks a lot worse than it actually is <laughs> I want to mention at this stage you will get a load and load and load of metal filings so if you've got a dustpan and brush handy or better still a little handheld vacuum cleaner or of some device then after we've done all the cutting that's what I'm going to do pause the video and have a tidy up because you'll get loads of metal filings over your hands and bits and pieces don't worry it looks like I said it looks a lot worse than it is so uh, it's okay I'm just gonna adjust this so I can cut the rest of this out, if you bear with me. Just work the actual fact. It'd be easier to get rid of these. Close to one side. It's much easier to cut on my bench actually, to be honest with you. Only a little bit left to do, and we should be through.
This can be a little bit tricky, as you can see. We're just going to find whatever works best for you. Just keep going around it until you get there. Nearly there. Nearly there. Right. Let's see if we can't get that. Let's see if we can't get that already. Right. Let's see if we can't pull that out. Hey presto, like toffee. There we go. Right, like I said, that's what we're aiming for. It looks a bit rough, but again, we're going to go around this with a file and we're going to tidy all this up. And once we file it up, we can go over it with a little bit of black paint and no one will know the difference. But anyway, that's basically how you cut it out. It looks a little bit of a pig to do, but if you take your time, like I said. Um, then you'll get there. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to stop, I'm going to pause the video, I'm going to do exactly the same with the other end, and then I'll come back to you. Okay, so we have successfully cut out both the old bogey support frames. Looks really rough I know, at the moment, but what we're going to do now is we're going to take a flat file, like so. This might take a little bit of time, again, you don't want to rush this, and just tidy it up. chassis out of it's, it's it's quite strong so you don't have to worry about breaking it but at the same time treat it with respect as well when you're filing just take your time with it you can turn around and just not do these bits here Generally, go around it. That's all you got to do. Just take off all the rough edges where you've cut with the Dremel. I say you can use rail cutters, um, is it Zurex or Zuron cutters, whatever they call them. 
Um, it says you can use those, but even though it's a little bit awkward, I do believe that using a Dremel is a lot more faster. But if you don't feel confident in using one of those, you can use the specialist cutters like I mentioned. Anyway, like I said, just come round and just have a little tidy up with the file. Right, so, side there. What I'm doing is nothing special. Just generally, where you see any burrs, just tidy them up. And again, I'm, we're going to paint all this area with black paint, so it, it's not going to notice at all. And once the motors are all seated in and the seats are tucked back in with the chassis, no one's none the wiser. But just um, be mindful. Um, under the chassis, in this area here, if you get little, tiny little scratches, again, you can fill it in with a bit of paint. There's no problem whatsoever. So, this end here, I'll just come and tidy up a little bit. Put it on see me. <laughs> I'm sure you really want to see what I'm doing with the file. So exciting. But nothing special. Look, that's all I'm doing. Just tidy it up until it looks reasonably decent. Like I said, is just use the eye. The eye is the best tool we have. Let's just have a look where it looks a little bit unsightly and then just tidy it up with a file. Again, um, these little bits here where it's scratched into the chassis slightly. Again, don't worry about that. No one's going to see that on that side and it's all going to be underneath anyway. And that you can disguise again with some paint. Once we paint this up again, you'll see it looks it look much better. But this stage it's a little bit rough, so you've just got to be careful. One other thing as well, it, it, when you're handling um, the chassis, after you've done the cuts, you will have some sharp rough edges. So again, be careful when you're handling it. Uh, if you wear, want to wear gloves, you can. I know I'm wearing gloves, even though I should. Um, but just be careful. And obviously keep your fingers away from where you've got sharp edges when you file them. And just tidy it up.
So anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to carry on this file and the rest of this. I'll stop this and then when it's all finished, we'll uh, give it a little bit of a paint up. And while that's drying, uh, we can get a start on preparing the motors, bogey and seating area. Okay? So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so this is our next stage. As you can see, this is the chassis that we cut, as we saw earlier. Now what I've done, actually, I've painted all of the scuff marks and I'll bring it up closer to the camera as best I can. So we can just whoop, bring it a bit closer. So the paint's still wet in there at the moment, so it's got to dry. As you can see, but that's our two holes cut. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this on the, on the shelf above me here, above the workbench. I'm going to leave it to dry for a good while. And then I'm going to shut the camera off and have a little tidy up of this for my arms covered in metal filings as it is. So I've got to go and clean up, clean up the tools, clean up the workspace, keep good housekeeping and all that. And I shall see you in a little bit. Okay, next up, we're going to fit the actual motors to the chassis. So the first thing we need to do is look at our next stage of instructions. And as it says here, we've done all that bit there. As you saw from the previous clip, we've cut the holes out, done all that, yep. So this is the next bit here. We need to remove the seating area, in this case at both ends for the motor bogey to fit in place with the bracket. So we're going to now cut those bits out and then after that we should where is it, excuse me, we should resemble something like that. So that's the bits we're going to get onto next as per instructions here. And that should be job done. So join me in a mo. Okay, so our next step will be to use the good old flat file, you'll need this flat file or a flat file and you'll need the old razor saw and well, that's what we're going to be doing our cutting with. We'll finish with the Dremel so hopefully not too much mess. You do get a little bit of mess but not as much as cutting with the Dremel so we're going to need that. Put that to one side over there and all we're going to do is just cut this area and cut that area out. Um, as you can see here I've got both motors now readily available. The second one came in the post this morning so I've been waiting a number of days to do the next part of the video which for you lucky people watching this on YouTube it will be a matter of seconds but it's been a couple of days because <laughs> I'm waiting for the old postman. Anyway, bless him, he's brought my second motor kit so obviously apart from the motor you get this little bag here which contains some shims, nuts and bolts, the bogey support bracket and also the uh, the I've lost the words now. The support arm that actually holds the motor in place um, in the actual space where we've cut out, plus the bracket supports that actually fit the motor to the um, EFE frames. So anyway, it'll all be revealed. So if just do your best to follow along, and uh, hopefully you won't uh, go wrong. So first things first. We'll open up this bracket because we'll open up the bracket from the bag should I say because what we need to do is I'll show you where it needs to sit and why it makes sense to cut out the actual area we're going to cut out. So we'll just use one for the time being and we'll move on to the next one afterwards as we go along. I'll screw back in there. Keep that safe in the kit. Just that if you start of example like I was mentioned in the previous video, um, you get the motor, a balance weight and a little tiny cast motor moon figure which we're not going to use because I've already seated mine in place. But let's put the rest of the bits and pieces back in the box, keep it safe because they do wander and you will learn a new vocabulary. Right, so if we look at this motor bracket, um, if you look at it as the camera 
shows there. You see there's a large hole in, the, in one end for the, the mounting screw to secure to the motor via this bracket. But what it's got to do is, it's got to sit along the fourth, the fourth seat of the carriage in the area we're going to put the motor in. So it needs to go, let me just move that into shot there, apologies, but if you look here, let me see, I use my pointy device, where's my pointy device today, oh, that'll do, here's my pointy device, right, <clears throat> see this on the camera shot, if you go to the first pair of doors that are nearest to the driver, and you count the seats, one, two, three, four, the fourth seat, if you can see this at home, it aligns up with that central raised area there which corresponds underneath with uh, where is it that bit which also corresponds with the dead on centre of the bogey so in layman's terms what you have to do is the nose of the bracket should rest about say there that's roughly where you want it to sit <coughs> that in shot yes or no yes I think it is yes so I'm just trying to do my best to work with the camera rather high up. <coughs> so as mentioned, the bogey bracket needs to sit roughly about there. So what we've got to do is remove all this area here underneath to about there and there and do the same at the other end. And that will then give you plenty of clearance for the bogey to swing left and round, uh, left and right, sorry, sorry, as you go around curves and point work so that will give plenty of clearance but you'll see as we go along but anyway we need to remove this area here first of all <coughs> so what I tend to do is if I take a where's my box of what markers somewhere over here I think in this Box. Yes, there they are. Have a little look, that'll do, won't it? Yep. That's right, just off camera, I've got a box of black permanent markers of all different shapes and sizes sharpie pens, chiseled tip markers, and just for marking out on jobs and bits and pieces. So, what I'm going to do now, again, <clears throat> I've just come out of shot a little set slightly so you can see what I'm doing. Anyway, so what you need to do next is take a marker, a pen of your choice, and what's important to do is, we flip it around this way, start this end, we'll do the driver's end first, because it was back to front before. So if we put our bracket in and we count one, two, three, four, it needs to be about there. about about there that's the correct way to actually have it so let's just mark it out roughly about there so you notice that it can't go any further because it's actually being restricted by the seating area risers that are still in place before we actually even cut them out so if you push it along as far as it will go it's actually a dead fit between those two four seats opposite so if you can see that on the camera that's exactly where the bracket needs to be I'll zoom it in Ooh, that's a bit better apologies but that's you see where that's sitting there where that's sitting is exactly dead center where it needs to be for the bogey pivot exactly spot on and I say the um, this bit here, uh, yeah, there. this bit here, it will restrict the bracket from moving any further. So actually, that's like a buffer. So as soon as you hit push up against the end of these two rests here, you know exactly your spot on for where you need to cut. So, as mentioned, I will now show you how to cut and mark out for the seats or the seating area it needs to be removed, should I say, for the bracket. So. First of all, put the bracket in the right way. Da da da. 
and then this is where you've got to grow an extra set of hands. <laughs> Hopefully you can see this at home. And all I'm going to do is just make sure it's dead centre, like so, and then just. Mark it out. Mark it out. All right. So if I show you now, it might make a bit of sense. But can you see that at home? I can't even see. Oh, there we go. Yes, you can. I'll just bring the camera in. So that's what you should be left with. That little black black outline there is where you need to cut also along and round and that space out as well. And you need to cut up as far as say, uh, where is it? I'd say about as far as far as there. That area there. Anyway, once you've done that, it's time to get on with it. So here we go. So let's put that bracket to one side a minute. <clears throat> and I normally just come in with this razor saw because it is quite sharp, so be careful. And then just let's see what I'm doing here. Take your time. And because this is such a, a nice saw in terms of getting accurate straight cuts it will do the job for you without any kind of struggle go see it's come through there you just carry on and what you can do if you find it easier this is another way to do it as well if you flip it over you can um, just look where you're gonna cut you can actually do it this way as well See, I'm not even going too mad with it. Um, you just take your time, and the saw will do all the work for you. Again, just flip it round or not, <laughs> and we just carry on through here where we originally cut. So we'll just keep going through. Right, I'm not buttering my toast, I'm just getting all the, <laughs> the plastic off the actual blade. Have a little check, turn it over to see if where you're cutting, that looks good. And then, again just come in with it and start again the other side.
just showing you various ways that you can do it. There's, once you get through, just persevere with it. It does come through. see it's a little bit of a long process but you just take your time with it and you'll get there. Don't rush. Do that, just pop it out, and then just use your fingers to gently get rid of that hole, and there we go. That's the first bit done. And again, these rough edges where we've just cut with the razor saw, do not worry because you can come in with the file very shortly and just tidy it up, like I said. So now you've got that bit cut out, that makes life a little bit easier to get to that bit there. So what I'll do is just come in and cut down a bit of a chore as I said but just keep at it don't give up and then just follow the other side Like I said, with the razor saw, the idea is it gives you a nice straight cut. You can't go wrong with it. Well, that's pretty much there. do if you really want to be clever with one of these if you look where I'll bring this up to the camera oh come on not enough light oh do excuse me because I've got the curtains drawn in there because it's so bright and sunny I'll bring the camera in right if you see these two little marks in there where I've cut up as far as two if you want to actually bring those together to meet so you can do your cut, just basically get your saw and then go across it. 
until they meet in the middle and you can get your cut. Like that. And then all you've got to do is just pull it down and away. And there you go. Simple. Right. So basically that's what you've got to do guys. Oop, sorry. Um, just cut the hole out as shown there. Now we've got our, our file slot for the motor um, bracket support arm. What we'll now do <coughs> is I'm going to do the other end and then I'm going to come back and just go over it with the file. So bear with me. I'm sure you don't want to see me cut out the other one because that was long and painful enough doing this one. <laughs> um, anyway, if you go and grab yourself a cup of tea, or whatever you choose, I shall be back shortly. Hello, hope you're suitably refreshed and you gone to your cup of tea or coffee and had your necessary bathroom breaks. <laughs> anyway, right, so moving on, this is what we've got now. I'll just bring the, the camera into the workbench rather than me and job into the camera, because at the moment, like I said, I've got the curtains drawn in here because it's absolutely roasting hot outside and not only not getting sunshine, direct sunlight on the layout doesn't do any favours, but it's also rather warm. So I'll zoom in so you can have a little look. Okay. So as you can see, we've cut our two main holes. All the cutting's been done. As you can see, we've got the rectangle space there and the rectangle space there. They should be something like that in terms of symmetrical. That's how they should look. If you look at that closely, that's how they should look. It should resemble that. So what we're going to do now is come in and do a nice little bit of filing. It doesn't take long. And just tidy up without for actually coming out of shot. <laughs> It's a matter of minutes, not even that, because it's plastic and it it's not much to really file. Because the razor short razor saw has done such a nice job, it shouldn't be that much to tidy up. Let's just give it a little bit of TLC. And you will be rewarded immensely.
<clears throat> there isn't much to tidy up, as you can see. It's much more easier to do than the old um, Dremel work with the chassis itself. I mean, for example, we've got two little bits just on the end there that are hanging on for dear life which we don't want there because it's going to restrict the bogey movement so again what we can do is just completely get rid of those making sure they're out of the way so what we'll do is come in and off they ping into oblivion That is virtually that. Right, there we go. Now, the next thing we need to do is reattach the chassis to the seating detail compartment and then we will, be needing, we will drill some holes also for the brackets to actually sit to the chassis and reattach the bogies with the motors on and we'll get on to the next stage of construction. So, back in a tick. Right, the next stage we'll do is we will reattach the chassis to the seating area with our screws. So what we'll do is we'll just those out there. That everything still fits, which it does. And what you should now have is is that assembly. Two nice slots for the motor bracket support arms to sit, and it should all be. Set. There we go. So what you want to do is one, two, ignore that hole up there, and then one there and then one there so those two large holes are going to be the bracket uh, nut and bolt holes which we'll now install and then tighten up so it holds everything together <clears throat> okay so we've now fitted the motor arm support brackets on both ends so again I'll take the camera off the tripod so we can see what we're doing. <clears throat> Alright, that's better isn't it? Right, there we go. So that's how you should fit those accordingly. And if we turn it over, you see it makes sense because those two screws there and those two screws there now hold the underframe detail little square bit there as well in place that holds that in place and when you look at it from that angle everything 
from camera shot to camera shot should be all be nice and flush, nice and level. Plenty of space there for the bogey. Still at the fourth seat, no further, no shorter, and everything is good to go. The reason I've put the nuts and bolts in that in with the bolts facing up into the chassis is because any time, you know, heaven forbid you've got to do a motor change, you don't need to touch those brackets by the way. But should you have to take that bracket off for any reason or get take the mechanism apart, you can do it thus so from that end rather as opposed from faffing around that end. Anyway, you shouldn't have to touch those ever again, but there we go. They're in place. So now let's move on now. We're ready to do our bogey and motor fitting itself. Okay, next up we're going to look at the bogies and motor actually converting them to the motor bogies themselves. So what we need to do is get a hold of the two bogies there. We've got our two motors, all the necessary bits. So let's get on with it. So. <clears throat> right, okay. Bring this in as best I can. There we go. Right, that's excellent. So let's put our two traction motors like that there, out the, just together. So the first thing we need to do, we need to take the underside of these off. And I'll just try and bring this in as best I can. Apologies for my camera work today, it's not fantastic, I know. Right. So, you've got these two brackets here which when, in, a, in a moment we'll take the bottom come on <laughs> we'll, we'll take the bottom of this motor bogey well, it comes off there's a small retaining screw just make out where my finger is there in between those two clips there's a small screw if you can see that very very finely we're actually going to dispense with that because you don't need that at all because these motor frames just slide one way and they clip in one way so they stay pretty tight in there nothing's going to drop out no dirt or fluff's going to get into the motor and everything sits quite nice and tight for that you having to worry um, but that screw there needs to come off because not only is it a, a pain in the backside to actually retighten and put in it just goes missing and I personally me personally I don't worry about these screws but let's undo this screw and then I'll show you what we're going to do next Right, so on these motors, when you look at them, there's an arrow clearly pointing one way towards the screw. And the idea is when you take the screw off in a bit, you'll see they just push forward, the, the floor pushes forward, and you just unclip it and then put it back in the reverse order. Anyway, it'll make more sense when you see me do it anyway. I know I'm waffling on a bit, but let's take that nasty little screw out. I absolutely loathe these screws because they're absolutely a pain in the backside to get out. I'm just going to stop the camera and get something a little bit more suitable to remove that screw. Okay, I've managed to get the horrible little nasty screws out. I'll try and put them back afterwards but if I don't, I don't. But uh, it's not a problem if you can't get them back, like I said, because they are very, very fine screws. So what we'll do now, we'll just take the bottom floor of these motors off, these ten shodos, and I'll show you, all you've got to do is literally take your thumb and gently push that way, and the, where the arrow is telling you to do that, and then I normally take a small craft knife or a screwdriver and just lever those up, and they do, he says, <laughs> they do come up, there we go one side, go around the other side, let's come up, should use that, it's easier, come out, there we are, okay, that simply lifts off like that, and we'll do the other one as well, like I said, 
just just simply leave that off. You'll hear it click like that. Don't worry, don't panic. And gently lift that off like that. And that reveals the motor in all its glory, as you can see there. There we go, it's better isn't it? Right, I'll show you what I'm going to do next. Into the maintenance drawer, out comes his oil pen. Now you'll see, as best I can, I'll zoom in again, I don't want to... There we go. Okay, so you'll see there's two plastic gears. Now there's a lot of people that, again, I don't want to repeat myself in the last video, but a lot of people out there have said on online model railway forums that, oh, spud motors, they're no good, they're rubbish, and the gears wear out. From my experience, again, I've used these in the past, and I think they're actually decent little motors. Again, if you want to pay £97 for a Black Beetle motor, um, that's entirely up to you, but these are much easier to fit, and there's not, not as much cutting involved. I mean, if you thought that was bad, what you've seen so far in terms of butchering the underside, um, that's nothing compared to what you've got to do with a Black Beetle. You've got to do a lot more cutting um, because they're slightly a bigger um, motor. Not much bigger, but just a little bit more um, work involved. Anyway, I find these very good personally. Anyway, what we're going to do, we're going to add a little tiny drop of locomotive lube oil on the gear itself. Not loads, but just enough to be present like that. We'll put a little bit on the axle bearing, bit there, bit there. Very, very fine amount, not loads, not loads. You don't want to be swimming in the thing. Just enough. Right. Put the old pen away. Don't need that no more. Right. The next stage is once you've done the lubrication like I did now. Now you might ask why do I bother taking the bottom of these off brand new motors when they've come straight from Radley models from the factory, never been run. Um, simply it's because the oil in the factory can dry out and obviously during storage in someone else's shop or whatever they can dry out. So you want to give a little bit of lubrication, it's good, always good practice. Just like when you buy a ready to run locomotive on the oil railway, you always make sure it's lubed up and certainly run in. These will need running in once installed, you will need to run it round um, about say 20 minutes minimum each way then in reverse, 20 minutes the other way. Um, the same thing you do with it, for example, a Hornby locomotive or a Backman loco, uh, lubrication and running in time is important. Once that settles in, um, everything should run sweet as a nut. You'll have a very sweet running model. Anyway, it's time to put the covers back on, but not just yet. If you notice on the bottom of these motor plates, there you go, my little lamp is picking it up quite nicely. There's a little raised round notch in the middle of the floor plate there can you see that that little round notch that corresponds with the motor bracket that actually goes into the bogey frame as you can see it's got a hole in it that corresponds with that so what we've got to do now is carefully get the super duper glue out and just secure that to the underside in preparation for attaching it to the frame he says and my tube of super glue has decidedly decided to stick itself to the <laughs> oh dear oh dear cut the camera <laughs> it has, has actually it's all there's some in there but it's stuck it's all seized up oh blimey so is my knuckles oh dear oh dear oh dear let me just stop this a minute and uh, we'll uh, carry on. Right, I'm back on a mission. I've unstuck the super glue. <laughs> right, so all we're going to do is put a little dab on there and just prepare this ready for attachment to the Merutabergi frame. Let me stick that in there simply like that. Let it dry. Let it go off after about say a couple of minutes. Put it over there. That's one done. And then what we're going to do next is to simply repeat the same action with the other one because there's two motors. So we'll 
you've got to repeat everything twice. But that's okay. As long as you're all out there. You're all enjoying this by the way. You're, you're following this along okay? Good. Lots of people shaking their head in confusion saying, no, no, I'm lost. <laughs> Don't worry. Don't worry. It makes more sense actually than the paperwork because when you read the paperwork that you get from Radley Models in the PDF format, you print it off or look at it on your iPhone or iPad, it does look a bit daunting. But when someone's actually sitting down and showing you well, this is actually what you do physically with the tools, this is how you cut this, this is how you attach this, and this is why you have to make that slot for that slot, and A goes to B and sort of thing, it makes more sense. People, I think, I don't know about you guys out there, ladies and gents, but I was always um, not so much an auditory learner, I was more a visual learner at school. Um, someone wrote um, stuff on the blackboard in the science class, it made no sense to me. I wasn't dyslexic. Well, I was dyslexic from a certain age to I was 12 years old, then I learned to read and write properly. Um, but after that, when I was in mainstream sort of um, secondary school, I was always, yeah, that don't really make too much sense what you've written up there, but if you come and show me what you're talking about, I learned a lot more that way, more hands on. So, Sometimes when people show you these videos on YouTube about doing things like this, it makes more sense. And I hope it's making more sense today. Anyway, my waffling has wasted a bit of time, which meant the super glue has cured. Okay. Good, that's virtually almost dry. Well, it is dry because it's, it's grabbed it, which is what I want. Now, just while we've got these motor covers off, you only need to take these off for two reasons. Uh, during the, the maintenance life of your underground train just like the real thing it's supposed to have periodic maintenance just like a real 1938 stock or tube train um, it has to go into the, the shop every now and again the depot um, to have a motor overhaul not every now and again but once in a while and your model is, is going to be no exception what you'll need to do mainly with these is keep the wheels clean uh, the way I do it is cotton bud light the fluid, power applied to the two terminals and just whiz it round and cotton bud dipped in light and fluid, pressed against the flange of the wheel, get all the crap off there. So keep your wheels clean. The other thing is um, there's pickups that rest against the back edge of the wheel and you'll need to clean those from time to time as well. You shouldn't have to. If your track's nice and clean, you keep your wheels clean regularly, shouldn't be a problem. But should you have to get to the pickups and clean them, then you will have to take this bottom motor floor plate off and <clears throat> what you'll find is, is that the bogey will come away and just leave the motor as it is now as you see before you. So what you'll do is clean your pickups and also from time to time, not again, don't do this too often because you will damage the motor. But I'd say between every, say every six to eight months, have a little look at these gear cogs inside the motor. If they appear to be dry or the motor sounds a little bit dry and running, um, add a little dab on the gear cogs there but not um, overly overly again but again by listening to your model as well um, going around the track you'll also hear differences in the motor if it appears to be very very noisy um, that's a good indication that's probably an, it's in need of lubrication on the gears simple as that anyway enough waffle on with the job so what we're going to do again these go back like so and just click back on there Oops. and what you've got to watch is what I've just done there is the pickup has sprung out of place now you've got to be careful so I'll now have to <laughs> I'll now have to actually do this again and take it off oh dear all right back in the tick Right, okay, well, this is a first. We've actually managed to get the screws back in, believe it or not, with this um, scalpel bladed knife very carefully. I've got these back in the holes and got the brackets fastened. I've got those fastened and super glued in there. Pickups are correctly sitting behind the wheels because they were a little bit of a fight to get in there sometimes if you take the bottom off. But we got there in the end. So the next thing we need to do now is if you can see on the motors the actual wheels the axles protrude far too long over the end so what you need to do is click those off so they're nice and flush with the wheel so I'll do that now <coughs> you're still with me that's good 
Right. Okay, so let's get my cutters. And again, just put them to the back edge of the wheels and just one, two. Can require a little bit of a effort, but generally you can clip them off like that. Perfectly fine. It's just the access. But what you don't want is the axles poking out too far so they obscure the frames of the, the bogies there. So, that's that one done. We'll just do the same with the others. One, oh, that's pinged into oblivion as you can hear behind the camera. <laughs> Two, three, four. I was hoping it would hit my spot lamp here and it will make a nice, uh, where is it? <laughs> you won a prize, <laughs> like the fairground. Anyway, so that's our motors all sorted out. Um, little simple thing you can do once they're installed. You can um, have these out again if you wish to, but I'm, the other way is you can just take a paintbrush and some black paint thin down. You can paint these wheels black after it's all installed and working no problem but our main priority right now is to get these fitted up and get the thing running which is what we're going to do so looking at our wheels there doesn't hurt take a flat file take the old flat file again and where you've cut the excess axles off that are sticking out far too much just go over it with a flat file get any burring off there you don't want doesn't take any effort at all, just take those off. Give for a nice smooth finish also and everything will run nice and free without any catching. And again, just check with your file that the file should sit nicely on top of the face of the wheel. There shouldn't be any rocking or anything sticking out too much. It should sit nice and flat, which means you've got a nice clean profile. That's it. There we go. And as you can see, or can't see because of the blinking camera light, but there we are. I'll zoom in. As you can see, look. There we are. Nothing sticking out there. Okay. So what I'll do, I'll do the other one. And I'm going to come back to you and I must go and get the old charging lead in a minute because the camera's going to die in about two minutes. So anyway, I'll see you in a moment. Okay, I've got the old camera plugged into the mains charger by the socket. So, no fear of losing power. Anyway, we're going to now um, trim these bogies up to accept the motor um, proper. So let's do that now. And for this job I'm going to be using a pair of these cutters again these are model um, modelers cutters for cutting off plastic sprues off kits they'll also cut through um, model railway rail um, they're pretty tough and they do take a little bit of abuse but obviously you're cutting through anything like really iron cast iron obviously they wouldn't do but you can cut through screws with these um, quite happily all fine small 8BA washers and nuts and stuff like that this will cut through We'll be using that again at the end of the project um, to trim down some little fine screws that will go in the, cu the coupling bars to couple the things together which makes life a lot easier anyway so what you need to do is as mentioned if we look at it from that shot all this area in the middle needs to come away because the motor has now got to sit through that 
So all you do, take your cutters, and I'll show you the first one. It's quite easy to do. Come in, and one. Turn it around, but out, wouldn't it? Two. Anything that needs filing or trimming up, again, you can do afterwards, not a problem. See, a matter of a few snips just dispense with that bit so we're left with a nice hole in the middle and again at this stage just test fit your traction motor and see where you're at with it right already I can see that if we turn it around that way yeah that back bit this piece look this piece here needs to come off a little bit more so that's okay, we can get rid of that. Dispense with that. Nearly have my fingers as well in the same process. Lovely. Just tidy it up as we go along. And again, test fit it. Always keep testing it. So, yeah, these bits here either side will need to be. Give it a little bit more trimming. Just think of all the tidying up you've got to do afterwards. <laughs> all the little bits and pieces. Right. Be within a second. Right, okay. So if we look at these bogies, if you look at this one here in example, the good best thing to do is if you get one of the old um, unmotorized bogies, the dummy ones, it's a good idea to look at the profile between the actual wheel and the side of the frame there so you can look exactly how you, the, the frames have got set once they're glued in place. Obviously you don't want them sitting too high, you don't want them sitting too low because of clearance problems, so you want them sitting about halfway. Um, the best way to describe it or to look at it is if you think of um, so it really simple that you can remember um, it's this it's the famous London Underground Circle and Bar logo but if you think about the wheels are the round bit and the frames the bar across the middle that's exactly the profile you want to look for with a nice profile evenly like that. That's how I remember it anyway, so another piece of useless information I'm sure. <laughs> Alright, okay, back to the job. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some super glue and we're now going to offer up the frame to the motor. Very simple. All you do once you've cut everything and you're happy, test fit it first. Don't glue anything without test fitting it because you'll always regret it afterwards. Have a little fit and see how it sits. And make sure you've got adequate clearance also between the wheels and the sides of the frame as you look down it in between um, these areas here. You don't want nothing catching and with the eye you want to make sure you've got a nice clearance. And the good old bogey bracket that sticks underneath the motor does that job for you. If it's a perfect fit that's exactly how you want it once you're happy and you've got everything in place dry just have a little marry up with the old eyes and make sure everything is how it should be seated and then once you're happy take it off again bring in your super glue super duper glue Put a bit on that side, put a bit on that side, and just go for it. 
make sure also you've got the bogey sitting around the right way so the shoes are not pointing up in the air and you haven't got it upside down as well. And then just gently ease it into place. And again, if you look at the side of it, get the profile sitting exactly where you want it to be. Turn it round with your fingers and just gently ease the other side in as well without sticking your fingers. That should be ideal that side. That should be that side. Have a general look at it as well. And I always give it a little bit more as well. Just a little bit more weld there, as it were. Doesn't hurt. Carefully put it down, like so. Let it dry. Right, and that is pretty much it. So we're going to do the other one. I don't use that one because that was off an example. Right. So again, come in with your clippers and start clipping away. You know, I was coming with the good old flat file and just tidy up a little bit. Have a little play around, see what goes where. Does she fit like a glove? Absolutely. Lovely fit. Once we're happy, <coughs> apologies for being off shot there. That's better. Sorry about that. So what I'm just doing now is just getting everything lined up as accurate as possible. I'm happy with that. Bring everything into touch. Once you're happy, 
secure it in place with some super glue. Like so. Already I'm happy with that. So that's our motor buggies all glued, secured, and in place. And I shall join you in a few moments after. I need to go for a PNR, which is driver's talk for personal need relief. That might be a toilet or a tea break. So I suggest that you do the same. See you in a moment. Right, folks, we are nearly there. And I hope you're still awake, you haven't fallen asleep on me. Stay awake, folks. <laughs> it's been a long day, it really has. Anyway, I'm so glad that you've been with me all throughout this video and you've paused it numerous times to go to the toilet and go and have a cigarette break or whatever you needed to do. But um, thanks for sticking with me. And my main aim is that if you can get your model EFA tube train running perfectly after the, you've followed what I've shown you today then I will be so pleased. I can go to bed a happy man. Anyway, do you remember these? These are the underfloor plates that clip into the dummy bogies. Um, here's an example up here I'll bring down. As you can see on the bogies that don't have the motors, just dummy trailing bogies that plate just covers the wheels and keeps all the wheels from falling out. Normally, after you motorise your bogies, these have become surplus to requirements, but I've just found a nifty little idea. You see on the end of each end of this plate here, there's a raised little clip, and it's got like a little lip that sits on the outside, which clips into the bogey frame, but it's, as I said, it's slightly raised there. Can you see that? That bit there? Well, if you get your cutters and just lock that bit off, what you can actually do, what I've done here on both these bogies, give an example, I've used it to pack uh, one end up as you can see there, which is, um, sorry, bridge point, this bit here. Normally, as you can see on the end of that end of the frame, there's nothing there. And a little problem is, is when you put the motor brackets that super glue attach to the underneath the moat, what I'm trying to say is in layman's terms, blah, is the bracket that we, su we super glue underneath the motor floor that, that glues itself to the side frames of the bogey which houses the motor. Once it sits in it's fine but it does tend to wobble about you'll find so if it, I thought by packing one of the ends at least and super gluing it with one of those bits of plastic off the floor plates, the old ones, actually secures it much better and keeps the whole thing more level. So that's a little nifty trick you can do. Again, if you lop off just the end of that, trim it to size and put it in one of the ends or both ends of the bogey frame to pack it out and to hold everything together, job done. Right, onward and upwards. Right, we're nearly there. We are nearly there because what I've done now is simply installed both the motors on the, on the motor arm support bracket and everything is in place. The two large black screws that you'll get, one goes in there through each armhole and then what you should get, what you should get if we turn it over, this is what I want you to have at home. Each bogey independently doing this. Plenty of clearance and look as well as listen, look with the eye, make sure you've got loads of clearance which you have that shouldn't be a problem. Again, these you should operate on fourth or third at the most radius track. Uh, again, if you've got um, flexi track where your curves are nice and gradual, all the better. But fourth radius, um, they'll they'll be fine. Um, 
second radius just about but again the problem with that is is the coupling bars but we can address that later on but anyway the main thing is you want the bogies in place fixed with the fixing screw and be able to swivel left and right without catching on anything because we're going to connect the motors in series between motor to motor uh, via the motor tags um, the two copper ears that stick up you'll need to just very simply and gently with your fingers just push them knit them up and bend them inwards rather than them sitting downwards because we want the wires to go um, in this direction along here and back to the other end um, as neatly as possible we don't want the wires coming up under the seats to, because it will fail the bogies and any movement will be prevented by the wires in place underneath we want all the wires to be inside and out of the way so anyway let's get on and let's solder the wires up and uh, hopefully we should get some running very soon okay so what I've done now I have soldered two wires both in series from that motor going all the way along to the other motor tags so both motors are now connected in series um, I've just used different colour wire to colour code them but you don't have to if you've got two black wires or two wires the same colour it doesn't matter um, but what I've done I've just put a little bit of heat shrink in the middle there of the uh, the aisle in the middle of the car just to keep the wires together and uh, keep things tidy and that's my daughter in the background creating uh, hell um, <laughs> There we go. But anyway, that's what I've done for neatness. So you don't have to do this idea, but I just something I thought would be a little bit more neater. Um, you can put tape around it, but I just think this makes it a little bit more neat. And obviously black being inside the, the carriage, even when it goes around, it keeps it nice and dark and doesn't show up too much in the light as it goes around. But I'm not going to put any heat to that, to the heat ring. I'm going to leave that as it is. It just serves purpose to keep the wire in the tube nice and neat and uh, both motors are now connected. So what we're going to go and do now, um, I'm going to go and stop this just for a second and then we're going to put it on the track and give it a run round with the weights added as well. This is about the third or fourth circuit it's done so far in the last couple of minutes, straight on the track. And it's going to run even more sweeter when it's really run in. But I'm running it on my Gauge Master analog controller with the brake simulator on, about halfway at 50, just about 52 on the regulator, and look at this, look. When I put this on the track initially, I should have filmed this for my apologies, but when I did put it on the track it was quite noisy. And it's starting to get a little better, even though it's been lubricated and everything is sitting right and the motors are engaged with everything else in terms of all the gears correctly engaged. All the motors are sitting where it should be and as you can see, she isn't running too bad and I think that's pretty sweet. Definite, definite improvement with the two motors connected in series. <clears throat> obviously I've yet to paint the weights inside as you can see it going around the track there those two white metal casts were actually not there like a same material you get in the Hornby tender weights but um, as you can see when this comes around again having the two weights in the door wells really does help plus we've got two motors as I said so what I'm going to do now is paint those weights black, put the body shell back on, sort out the, tote, the coupling bars, stroke tow bars, and then in the next video you'll see uploaded, you'll see her running. Okay, well that is how you motorise and fit 10 Shendo stroke spud motors to an EFE static tube train model. Step by step, step as, do, as done by myself, instructions provided by Radley Models right what I'm going to do I'll just stop it on the old brake select reverse 
and she should move off in a minute. I can go to bed now, a happy chappy. All I'd say is before I finish the video, um, once you've coupled up your train and sorted out how to couple it up and it runs okay, um, if you get any problems with the shoe beams, the actual shoe collector shoes on here, um, I've left mine on and even I've got dummy conductor rail laid there, the fourth rail I'm still waiting from rails of Sheffield to be delivered but if you get any problems over point work or it derails just slot them off it's not a problem but as you can hear and see rattles over those points lovely anyway guys and girls it's been an absolute pleasure absolute pleasure doing this video this tutorial how to fit an EFE tube train with 10 Shodo motors um, not quite sure how you DCC them because I'm an analog man, but if you uh, have any questions, then feel free to drop me a message. Anyway, thanks for sticking with it, and I hope you have the same success as I've just shown you at home, so you can be better modelers out there during this uh, coronavirus. Anyways, please stay safe to you and your loved ones at home, and stay strong, let's keep together in the hobby and I'll see you soon. God bless you, bye bye.